Geothermal is clean. Geothermal energy is cleaner. Geothermal is clean. Geothermal is cleaner. Welcome to the third annual Kangia Conference. We have all the publicly traded companies in North America, that's both Canada and the States, here presenting at the Kangia Conference, as well as we have all the Western Canadian territories and provinces who have geothermal potential. So both government representatives as well as developers, and of course, many interested parties and geothermal services companies. The core focus of the conference that Geothermal is putting on right now is really to raise all the awareness. Right now, we continue to be the only country in the world with significant geothermal potential, and yet we have no operating plans whatsoever. It makes no sense to us that America could be number one, and Mexico could be number four in the world, and Canada has nothing. I think it's really important that that CANG as an organization gets the support of those that are in the business trying to advance this, because industry always needs a voice, and it needs that voice to be heard at all levels of government. And if you can do that, uh, and, and the media can help do that, that's a, that's a huge advancement. Basically, we're trying to support the industry, uh, uh, the geothermal industry internationally. So we're working with the National uh, Geothermal Energy Associations. And as part of that, we're supporting Kangia in raising awareness for geothermal in Canada. People see geothermal heating, they see hot springs, they see bathing, but they don't connect this with electricity generation. Uh, and the potential for that is actually relatively great, but it demands a high capital investment and uh, it's a relatively long lead time to develop. So people are a little bit shy in developing geothermal simply for those reasons. But if you do that, you have a really, really uh, exciting uh, energy technology that would provide baseload capacity to the energy mix. Well, Iceland was, was as, an, as an island state naturally kind of really depending on import oil imports for heating because it's a relatively cold country as well so it needs oil or needed oil for heating and then the oil crisis basically the the bill skyrocketed for for heating so the country at that point decided to 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 develop geothermal resources for heating and electricity generation so today 90 percent of all homes are heated by geothermal geothermal looks like a power plant and uh, uh, they don't really know what's going on there because it's all happening below the surface. Um, the biggest hurdles towards geothermal is the uh, cost uh, and expense of, of building plants. The Obama administration has brought in some big uh, grant money. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we are in, uh, in Nevada and, in, and where we are. Uh, there's uh, the ERA program, uh, which they provide 30% of your capital expenditures back in, in an outright grant. And there's also Department of Energy loan guarantees, which will lower your financing charges for, for, the project, for a project for building plants. The Yukon is a, is a part of the uh, Ring of Fire area, which has the geological characteristics that are required uh, for geothermal energy development. And nobody until the last few years has done the kind of work to advance uh, the development of geothermal power in the Yukon. So we've been doing that. So it's a matter of, um, you know, mapping and water sampling and soil sampling and drilling uh, at sites and then developing the information and seeing whether the potential still exists to carry on. And uh, we've been spending a fair bit of energy. We've got a, a very extensive program and have had for the last couple of years. Cool. I think in Canada, we're probably one of the most advanced programs and again, maybe driven by necessity, maybe driven by philosophy in the sense that we want to make sure that we're only developing renewable. Uh, but the necessity is we need more capacity and we've got to look at all the options. And it's not a, a one-trick pony. There's no one solution anywhere in the country. In the 2000s, it's come full circle again. We're in another energy crisis. We're worried about clean environment and so geothermal is having another day. And of course, we have excellent resources here in BC Right now the biggest issue is getting access to the land uh, and having uh, access to leases. Typically you have to p spend 10 or 20 million dollars to get to that feasibility level. It's all high risk because the, the geothermal resource is hidden underground and you need land tenure to be able to go raise that kind of money to uh, get through that drilling phase. We need a light of fire, a light of fire under the 
uh, Energy Ministry. For um, about 30 years, um, I developed and ran a company called Synexus Global. The amazing thing about geothermal is its capacity factor. It's, it's at 90 to 95 percent capacity. And wind only works when the wind blows. Solar is only um, available 50 percent of the time. But geothermal is 724, 365. Burn power. It's base load power. Other than the construction uh, pollution of the trucks, uh, we use a binary uh, closed loop system which is absolutely pollution free. This is clean, green power. Right now, Kangia estimates that 5,000 megawatts of potential at least are available in our country. That's enough, or the equivalent of, all of the power produced right now in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, PEI, and all three territories. Of course, this could be a significant part of the entire fuel future for Canada. Let's make sure that happens. Geothermal is cleaner. <laughs> good job. Are we good?